Hey, I'm Noah Kozlov getting into some NBA free agency plans with Steve Kyler, basketballinsiders.com. Let's start with the Cavs and LeBron. We all expect LeBron to be back, but what else can the Cavs do? You know, they did most of their moves last year. When you look at the kind of Tristan Thompson deal, the Amon Shumpert deal, they kind of took themselves out of free agency from a salary cap point of view. They've got a big traded player exception. They can shop around. They can pick up a player that way. And then certainly the the exceptions. But they're not going to be a player in adding a, a Kevin Durant or, you know, an Al Horford. They're, unless they do that by trade, they're just not in the market for those guys. But when you're the Cleveland Cavaliers, and certainly when some of the money starts to dry up or you're one of those guys that's at the end of your career a little bit and the championship appeal is more important, the one thing that LeBron has done in that Cavs situation, he's really created an environment a lot of guys have fun in. And if you Mm -hmm. talk to anybody who's been around, even when it got bad last year, being LeBron's teammate's not a bad deal, especially if you can't get the big money. So I I think the Cavs are going to kind of wait this thing out a little bit and see which kind of veteran falls their way. All right, well, the Knicks aren't waiting anything out. Where are they headed? Yeah, they've got a pretty good shopping list. You know, I think Joe Kim Noah is at the very top of it. You know, I know there's been a lot of talk in the marketplace about Kevin Durant. That one's probably not going to happen, but Joe Kim Noah looks pretty real. Dwight Howard's on that list. Evan Turner's on that list. I know Jamal Crawford uh, is a player they've expressed some interest in. Kent Bazemore from Atlanta. So they've got the ability to try to maybe get two pretty good guys, maybe somebody who's going to be a lot closer to the max and then somebody who's just a little bit below the max. And, you know, part of this Derrick Rose trade was they moved off you know, some long-term salary in terms of Robin Lopez and and the ending deal of Jose Calderon. So they got Derrick Rose and the ability to add maybe two more guys, and they're being pretty aggressive and going after it. Yeah, so room this year and then next year when the cap goes up even further. How about the Lakers? Yeah, this one's always tough. You know, Lakers fans want to hear Kevin Durant. They want to hear Al Horford. But, you know, those guys just don't seem like they're overly interested. I think the top of the list for the Lakers is Hassan Whiteside. I know Ryan Anderson's a name I've heard mentioned there. Uh, Kent Bazemore, you know, they may be the team that sets the offer sheet on Harrison Barnes. You know, they're probably going for that next tier of guys. And that really probably makes sense, especially when you consider the young core that's there. I know Laker fans want to see this quick fix kind of move. Move, but where they're at with these young guys, going younger and maybe the next tier of guys makes sense and kind of building a more sustainable team going forward. I don't think a guy like Al Horford's going to leave money on the table and go to a team that wasn't in the playoffs mm-hmm. last year. Right there with you, Steve Kyler, basketballinsiders.com. Good talking to you. Thanks, Steve.